people, 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 welcome back to another pre-recorded podcast of the Arsenio Buck Show. Bring it to you today, some Tony Robbins. In terms of understanding compounding and giving you guys and breaking you guys your big financial question. Guys, there was one smart thing, probably, uh, I wouldn't say, well, you know what, yes. One smart thing that came out of Warren Buffett's mouth. At one particular moment throughout his 80, 80, 85, 80, 90 year old career, whatever it is, he said indexing is the smartest strategy for both you and me. He said this at the time when he was talking to Tony and Tony is now saying it to both you and I. Tony said, of course, he said to me and to you, indexing is the smartest thing to do. Now, of course, over the course of so many different podcasts I will be doing in terms of this, there are going to be a lot of breakdowns. But there is one particular breakdown I want to give you guys right now. It was a very, very interesting little excerpt right out of his book. So I'm going to retort this to you. He said there was a guy by the name of Dalbar. Now, Dalbar revealed a gigantic discrepancy between the market's returns and the returns that people actually achieve. So, for instance, let's get into this. The S&P 500 returned an average of 10.28% a year from 1985 to 2015. At this rate, your money frankly doubles every seven years, thanks to the power of compounding. See, you would have made a killing just by owning an index fund that tracked the S&P 500 over the 30 years. Now, you guys are understanding this, right? Index fund that tracked the S&P 500. Let's say uh, you'd invested, let's say, 50,000 U.S. dollars in 1985. How much would it have been worth by 2015? The answer? Not almost close to $1 million, $941,631. Now... But while the market returned 10.28% per year, Dalbar found that the average investor made only 3.66% a year over those three decades. At that rate, your money doubles every 20 years. The result? Instead of that million-dollar windfall, you would only wind up with 146000 So you throw 50000 into it initially, and over the next 30 years, you only make at 96000 So what explains this massive performance gap? Well, the thing is, there's a disastrous effect of excessive, or I guess you could say excessive, management fees, brokerage bullshit-ass commissions, is that what I call them, and excuse my French, another hidden cost that I'll probably be discussing, uh, discussing a hell of a lot. So, if you look at it this way, when everything hit in 2008, and if you were invested from 1985 to 2015, you would have, well, let's just say if you had an index fund in the S&P 500, you would have been safe. Apparently. Apparently. But the thing is, people get scared. And it was, a, you know what, in 2009, there was a monumental rebound. And that was the best time to start reinvesting. And that was the best time to start a business. Everything in 2009, that was epic. And you know what was so epic about 2009? I even booked a plane ticket. I booked a plane ticket from Los Angeles to Sydney via Brisbane, Australia. You know how much that plane ticket was? 700 US dollars from Los Angeles. Everything was dirt cheap at that time. Houses were dirt cheap, obviously, for a lot of different reasons. But... I really want you to, I really want to ask you about the, you know, just ask you a general question. What is it? What are you really after? Like, like, what are you really after? What, like, what is it the things that money, you know, money creates? See, because Tony Robbins, he actually quoted and he said in his book, he said, many of us believe or fantasize that money will bring us to a point. Where we finally feel free, secure, excited, empowered, alive, and joyful. But the truth is, you can achieve that beautiful state right now, regardless of your level of material wealth. So why wait to be happy? Why, why wait to be happy? You know what? Man, I see it all the time, man. 
you know, you got people like Grant Cardone, okay, he's like, oh, yeah, I've made almost, you know, close to a billion, although, you know, his net worth is this and that, I don't really judge anyone, but, you know, he has a private plane, he likes always driving in his Bentley to show people, you know, that he has money, and then he talks a lot about money, 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 but the thing is, guys, don't get thrown off by this, don't get thrown off by the whole aspect of money, like, Forex traders, have you ever met a Forex trader, like, straightforward? Like you've actually talked to one? I doubt it. And why? Because I really believe that this is probably the biggest scam on the face of the planet. A lot of people would say, no, well, we actually work in the stock market, this and that, and we get this, a percentage and that. But the thing is, why are people working in Wall Street? Are people in Wall Street working there to make a difference for the American society? Hell no. It's about their own greed, obviously. See, guys, I don't want you to be driven by the ugly part of money. Seriously, like I think just recently I was in um I was in one of the main shopping centers and I saw a Maserati, I saw a Lamborghini, all these supercars in this massive shopping center, and I'm looking at them and I'm like, why do people get such a high from that? If you gave me a million dollars right now, would I buy a super? Hell no, buy a supercar. Why? So then I could get some of these high so ass women that say, oh, I really do like that. No, 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 no. It's ridiculous. I don't understand the philosophy behind now. Okay, yeah, got it. I understand. Oh, maybe I want to buy a car for my mom, buy a house for my mom. Absolutely. I understand all of that. But remember that Les Brown story I probably never told you about in terms of, you know, Les buying a very big, beautiful house for his mother only for the guy who actually sold him the house. Um, I forgot what it was. I forgot what the term was, but he basically had to move out within a week because he didn't do his research in terms of what the house was. So he had to move back into the old neighborhood, and then, you know, he was crying to his mom, and his mom was like, don't you even dare cry, I'd even like that house. And he's like, but you said you like it. She's like, I don't give a damn about the house. And so the thing is, we get so caught up in all the material things. What are you truly after? Yeah, okay, got it. You guys probably listened to my podcast. You guys heard about me, you know, of course, going to uh, going to Singapore and whatnot. See the experience? And what I experienced through life, that's the only thing in the, th- that I'm going to be able to take to my grave. Guys, right now, I got people in so many different parts. I got people in Aurora, Colorado. Yeah, that place back six years ago, the big, big problem, right? I got people there listening to me. I got people in uh, Libya listening to me. I got people in Doha, Qatar listening to me. I got people in Finland, Netherlands, Spain. That's what I'm after. See, the thing is, money, okay, uh, I already know, I got so many people working on so many different things right now, so many different projects, a survey of this or that, people listening to me and viewing my blogs from all over the world, I'm truly and utterly grateful, that's what I'm after. Now, once I start making $10,000 US a month, $20,000 US a month, that's still not going to change me whatsoever, I'm still going to be right here, Arsenio, the ArsenioBuckShow.com, and that's never going to change. I will always remain humble just because I live in on a continent called Asia in a country called Thailand where my skin is nothing like that. I am not doing this for my own personal, you know, my personal beliefs or my personal insecurities or this or that. I'm after just financial independence. I want to be able to wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I want to take a trip to Mongolia and see what's out there. I'm, I want to become an independent or I guess you could say a location independent entrepreneur. And I want to touch as many lives as I possibly can in the process because there are a lot of people who are in need of my voice. I really want you to ask yourself the question, what is it that you're truly after? And with that being said, guys, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. Another one, Tony Robbins, coming up tomorrow. We're going to talk more about the power of compounding in very, very good detail. So please stay tuned for that. And you know what? People, there's a lot of fear. Before I even end this, I completely forgot to say this. There was a, there was one time, there was a story, right? There was a Buddhist monk, right? And he was going down this very narrow rural path one night, and he saw something. He said he thought he saw a big ass poisonous snake just blocking his way. So he, you know, he started panicking. He ran away, came back the next day, and realized that, of course, you know, returned to the scene of terror. But now, in the brightness of the day, that snake was just a damn rope. I don't want you guys to get scared about doing this whole investing thing with me or listening to everything. Of course, I'm just following what the book says. I'm just giving it to you through my personal, you know, my my perception, what I'm reading, what I'm putting on my blog, and through what they, you know, things that I've already experienced. 
You guys could be the ultimate judger of your life. But the thing is, people get scared of this because of fear. Fear because, well, guess 2008 in America. Things that have happened, you know, the Tom Yum Kun crisis out here in Thailand back in 1997. People are terrified of investing anything. And look at crypto right now. People are terrified of it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But you know what? Oh man, people are making ridiculous gains right now. And this isn't that Forex trading BS either. So guys, get into the game. This is your host Arsenio. Over and out. <laughs>